All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. The headlines: Winter session of Parliament begins today. Counting of votes for Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh Assembly elections to be taken up tomorrow. RBI to announce its bi-monthly monetary policy today. World Bank upgrades its growth forecast for Indian economy to 6.9% for current fiscal. India to take on Bangladesh in a must-win second ODI cricket in Dhaka today. And in football, Portugal and Morocco enter quarter-finals of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. The winter session of the parliament will begin today and continue till the 29th of this month. In a tweet, Parliament Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi said there will be 17 sittings spread over 23 days. He said government is looking forward to discussions on legislative business and other items in constructive manner. This will be the first session during which Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar, the chairman of the Rajya Sabha, will officiate proceedings in the upper house. Ahead of the session, an all party meeting was held in the Parliament complex in New Delhi yesterday. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Parliament Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi. Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs Arjun Ram Meghwal and V Murli Dharan attended the meeting. Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Chaudhary, DMK leaders T R Balu and Tiruchi Shiva, TMC leaders Derek O'Brien and Sudeep Bondopadhyay, CPI leader Vinoy Vishwam and leaders of other political parties also attended the meeting. After the meeting, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi said that the government is ready to discuss any issue allowed by the chair in Parliament. जिस विषय पर स्पीकर साहब और चेयरमैन साहब अनुमति देंगे उसके ऊपर चर्चा होगा और बहुत डिटेल में ढाई घंटे से ज्यादा हमारा चर्चा हुआ है और आउट ऑफ 47 सेवन पार्टी थर्टी वन पार्टी है पार्टिसिपेटेड द काउंटिंग ऑफ वोट फॉर गुजरात एंड हिमाचल प्रदेश असेंबली इलेक्शन विल बी हेल्थ टूमोरो इट विल स्टार्ट एट एट एम द काउंटिंग फॉर बाई पोल्स टू मैनपुरी लोकसभा सीट एंड सिक्स असेंबली कंस्टिट्यूएंसीज इन फाइव स्टेट्स विल ऑल्सो बी टेकन अप टूमोरो These assembly constituencies are Rampur and Khatoli in Uttar Pradesh, Padampur in Odisha, Sardar Shahar in Rajasthan, Kurni in Bihar and Bhanu Pratapur in Chhattisgarh. Election Commission has made elaborate arrangements to ensure smooth and peaceful counting. There will be 37 counting centers in Gujarat covering 182 assembly seats. Ahmedabad district has a maximum of 3 counting centers whereas Surat and Anand district will have 2 counting centers each. Talking to AIR Gujarat Chief Electoral Officer P Bharti said this time EVMs and postal ballot papers will be counted simultaneously ginti ki prakriya mein EVM machine aur postal ballot ka samavesh hota hai humne aisa pravidhan kiya hai ki postal ballot aur EVM machine ke vote ki counting ek sath hi ho jayegi jin matdan kendro par postal ballot se zyada matdan hua wahan special ERO ka bhi vyavastha kiya assistant returning officer jisse ginti ka samay kam ho In Himachal Pradesh counting will take place at 68 centers where mobile phone iPad laptop and other recording devices are bought Talking to AIR Himachal Chief Electoral Officer Manish Garg said that three tier security arrangements have been made for the counting कल हिमाचल में विधानसभा चुनावों की वोटों की गिनती होगी इसके लिए जैसे हमारी 68 एट असेंबली कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी है तो 68 एट काउंट हॉल बनाए गए हैं और प्रत्येक काउंटिंग हॉल पे आर ओस और ए आर ओस की रिक्वायरमेंट की गई है आठ बजे जो है वो काउंटिंग की प्रक्रिया स्टार्ट होगी हमने जो सिक्योरिटी के रिलेटेड जो है वो सभी अरेंजमेंट पूरे किए हैं जैसा नॉर्म्स है उसके हिसाब से थ्री टीयर सिक्योरिटी प्रोवाइड की जाएगी काउंटिंग सेंटर्स को News Services Division of All India Radio will broadcast special programs on the counting day tomorrow. Jan Adesh 2022 Results of Assembly Elections in Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh on Thursday the 8th of December 2022. Stay tuned for result updates every hour in our program Jan Adesh 2022 from 10 a.m. Special program in Hindi, Surkhiyon Me, on discussion and analysis of results from 7:10 p.m. to 7:20 p.m. In English, Spotlight program, roundup of election results from 9:15 p.m. to 9:30 p.m. Special program on bilingual discussion and analysis from 9:30 p.m. to 10 p.m. 
Tune in to FM Gold, Rajasthani Channel and National Network of All India Radio. Also, live on News on AIR app. The counting of votes for election to the 250 wards of the Municipal Corporation of Delhi MCD has begun. The counting is taking place at 42 counting centres. Talking to AIR News, Delhi State Election Commissioner Vijay Dev said, Elaborate security arrangements have been made at all counting centers to ensure the smooth counting of votes. दिल्ली में काउंटिंग करने के लिए 42 काउंटिंग सेंटर्स बनाए हैं उनके लोकेशन दिल्ली के अंदर चारों तरफ फैली हुई है वहां पे सुरक्षा के पूरे इंतजाम किए जाएंगे और वहां से हम टाइम टू टाइम के बुलेटिंस भी देते रहेंगे कि किस तरीके से काउंटिंग चल रही है और क्या उसके ट्रेंड्स चल रहे हैं रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया विल अनाउंस इट्स बाय मंथली मॉनेटरी पॉलिसी टुडे Experts expect a moderate interest rate hike of 25 to 35 basis points as inflation has started showing signs of easing. State Bank of India Group Chief Economic Advisor Soumya Kanti Ghosh said we expect the RBI to hike rates in smaller magnitude. He said a 35 basis points repo rate hike looks imminent. The current policy repo rate is 5.9%. The World Bank has upgraded its growth forecast for Indian economy to 6.9% from its earlier estimate of 6.5% for the fiscal year 2022-23. Praising India's economic resilience despite a challenging external environment, the World Bank noted that India's economy is relatively insulated from global spillovers compared to other emerging markets. The international financial institution said that despite external challenges, India is expected to remain one of the fastest growing major economies in the world due to robust domestic demand. In a similar development, Fitch Ratings has retained its India's economic growth forecast at 7% for the current fiscal. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. India Meteorological Department, IMD, has issued red alert for heavy rain and strong winds in 13 districts of Tamil Nadu, including Chennai, due to depression that has been formed over the southeast Bay of Bengal. Its impact will also be felt in Puducherry and Andhra Pradesh. Fishermen have been asked not to venture out into the sea. We spoke to IMD DG Mrithunjay Mahapatra about the possible cyclonic storm. कल जो लो प्रेशर एरिया साउथ ईस्ट वेव बंगाल पे केंद्रित था वो धीरे-धीरे पश्चिम उत्तर पश्चिम दिशा में गति करते हुए शाम को एक डिप्रेशन में परिणत हुआ था और आज सुबह एक डीप डिप्रेशन में परिणत हुआ है और ये धीरे-धीरे पश्चिम उत्तर पश्चिम दिशा में गति करते हुए आज शाम के आसपास एक साइक्लोन स्टर्म में परिणत होने का हमारा संभावना है 10 तारीख के अर्ली मॉर्निंग तक ये नॉर्थ तमिलनाडु पुडुचेरी और साउथ ऑन प्रेस तट को पार करते हुए धीरे-धीरे वीक होगा इसके प्रभाव में 8 तारीख से नॉर्थ कोस्टल तमिलनाडु साउथ National Crisis Management Committee, NCMC, yesterday reviewed the preparedness of central ministries, agencies and state governments with regard to the possible cyclonic storm. The meeting was held under the chairmanship of Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gauba. During the meeting, Mr. Gauba stressed that preventive and precautionary measures should be taken by the concerned authorities of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. National Disaster Response Force, NDRF, has made five teams available to Tamil Nadu and three teams for Puducherry. NDRF teams are also been kept on standby for Andhra Pradesh. Rescue and relief teams of the Army and the Navy, along with ships and aircraft, have been kept ready on standby. The air quality in the national capital continued to remain in the very poor category with the air quality index AQI recorded at 399 this morning. According to India Meteorological Department, the air quality is likely to improve but remain in lower end of very poor category today. In Nagaland, the 23rd edition of the Hornbill Festival entered 7th day today. Chief of Naval Staff Admiral R. Hari Kumar will attend the cultural program at Kisama as the chief guest this afternoon. The Hornbill, Hornbill Festival, a cultural extravaganza of all Naga tribes held at Naga Heritage Village, Kisama, began on the 1st of this month. It will conclude on Saturday. More from a correspondent. 
As the 10-day Hornbill Festival continues, several activities are taking place at various locations for the tourists to experience the diverse culture of Nagaland. Chief of Naval Staff Admiral R. Hari Kumar will grace the NZCC cultural program held at Main Arena Kisama as a chief guest at 1 p.m. today. Besides the daily cultural performances displayed by the Naga tribes, exhibitions of art and culture, sales of handloom and handicrafts, village experience, hip fest, heritage walk, people's festival at Kizakano village, Hornbill Angling Festival at Mokokchun and several others are some of the highlights of the ongoing Hornbill Festival. For AIR News, Asunyo from Kuhima. In the FIFA World Cup 2022 football, Portugal crushed Switzerland 6-1 in the round of 16 match and secured their spot in the 2022 World Cup quarterfinals at Lusail Iconic Stadium, Qatar, last night. Portugal will set up a quarterfinal clash with Giants players Morocco. Earlier, Morocco advanced to the quarterfinals after beating Spain 3-0 on penalties after the round of 16 match ended as 0-0 in extra time at the Education City Stadium in Qatar. A report. Sergio Busquets, Gavi and Pedri failed to make any significant impact in the midfield as Spain is defeated by Morocco in a penalty shootout and dumped La Rosa out of the World Cup. The two teams tried the best in 120 minutes but couldn't break the deadlock. Spain had the most number of chances to open score but Morocco remained alert in defense to force the game into penalties. Morocco goalkeeper Yasi Bauno made three saves in the penalty shootout as his team won 3-0. In a one-sided match, Gonzalo Amos scored a hat-trick while Pepe, Rafael Guerrero and Rafael Leo netted one goal each as Portugal defeated Switzerland 6-1 in the round of 16 match. Gonzalo Amos becomes the star of the night as he achieved the rare feat and becomes the first player to do so in this edition of the tournament. With this win, Portugal have set up a quarter-final class against Morocco. With Partius Ghost, this is Akas for Newsdesk. In the first quarterfinals on Friday, Croatia will take on Brazil at the Education City Stadium in Qatar at 8.30 p.m. Indian time. In cricket, India will take on Bangladesh in a must-win second one-day international at the shared Bangla National Stadium, Dhaka, today. The match will start at 11.30 a.m. Indian time. India will look to win this game to keep the hopes alive in the three-match ODI series against the hosts. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has invited students, teachers and parents to participate in the 6th edition of Pariksha Pe Charcha 2023. Prime Minister Narendra Modi conceptualized a unique interactive program, Pariksha Pe Charcha, wherein students, parents and teachers across the nation and also from overseas interact with him. They discuss and overcome the stress emerging out of examinations in order to celebrate life as an Utsav. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to VC Pramod. Thank you, Abhishek. The winter session of Parliament beginning today is noticed by the papers. Winter session, government eyes 16 bills, seeks opposition cooperation, writes the Times of India. The statesman, quoting Information Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur, says, India to become hub of drone technology. Court allows termination of 33-week pregnancy, reports the Hindu. Terror funds in focus as NSA meets Central Asian Security Advisors, informs Hindustan Times. World Bank raises financial year 23 India growth forecast to 6.9%, says Financial Express. CBI to question TRS MLC K. Kavita on December 11th at her Hyderabad residence in connection with Delhi excise policy scam reports the Asian age. And finally, to combat train delays caused by inclement weather, the Pioneer reports trains to zip at 75 km per hour to cut fog delay. Thank you, Pramod. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Winter session of Parliament begins today. Counting of votes for Gujarat and Himachal Pradesh Assembly elections to be taken up tomorrow. RBI to announce its bi-monthly monetary policy today. World Bank upgrades its growth forecast for Indian economy to 6.9% for current fiscal. India to take on Bangladesh in a must-win second ODI cricket in Dhaka today. And in football, Portugal and Morocco enter quarterfinals of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.